Um, thank you, Dale, and thanks for all the organisation. I've had a few technical glitches, so be patient with me. Um, as I've reconfigured the um, images to speak to what I'm saying, or the other way around. I would like to acknowledge as well the traditional custodians on the ancestral homelands upon which our talk and images are presented today. I pay my respects to the elders past, present and future and recognise their continuous connection to country. I would also like to acknowledge the custodians involved in the Right Fire project thus far, who have welcomed me onto their land and given me permission in order to present the images to you tonight. I pay my respect to the Indigenous Fire Sticks Alliance, the Welbunya, Mariwang, Ewan Elders, Uncle Noel Webster, Ado Webster, Wandarin Welbunyan Fire Practitioner, and Jacob Chant Morris, Kuriel Ewan, Gomeril Darawal Fire Practitioner, Victor Stephenson, Indigenous Fire Maker, Fire Practitioner, and co founder of Indigenous Fire Sticks Alliance, and descendant of the Togalaka Nation of North Queensland. Dr. Peter Marie Stanley, Indigenous Fire Sticks Alliance Research Training Officer, for permission to share these images taken in line with good fire practice, acknowledgement and protocol. I would also like to acknowledge Victor Stephenson for giving me permission to use the term right fire as my exhibition title and for the use of the word in all the visual, oral and text programming. That's an important, that's very important to Adrian. I'm really sorry he can't be here today. So taking up the challenge, culture in the face of climate change. This is a challenge. It's a challenge because we are experiencing and hearing about the devastation taking place in our country with the recent floods to the daily events throughout the rest of the world. In the past few weeks, we've heard about the continuous and growing catastrophic fires in France, Spain and Portugal and the heat waves throughout parts of Europe. And today we hear the Australian news platforms reporting about the state of the environment that exposes the escalating rate of extinction in our beautiful, with our beautiful mammals due to clearing land loss of biodiversity and habitat. So how do we stay focused on positive while continuing to collect this important material and continuing to share a positive view to the public? And what responsibility do I have as an artist, a long time artist working in documentary um, uh, photography and, multi and other multimedia practices, but mainly in that at the moment? How do I stay positive if I believe in something as powerful as cultural burn? And how do I share that to, the, to you, the audience, and to the children and other generations in the future? Fire has played a key role in the land stewardship practices of Aboriginal knowledge, custom, and law. My talk tonight is a fortuitous journey about walking with fire and how the experience, thanks to Adrian Webster, set me on a trajectory of releasing fear, negative con conditioning of my own understanding of fire toward a newfound awareness of Aboriginal good fire knowledge and practices. The day spent with fire with Adrian and the elders changed my perception of knowing that right fire is a healing fire, a cool fire, a safe fire, and a fire that protects the flora and the fauna, the biodiversity and the ecosystems to heal our country. I approached the documentary journey as I experienced my time with Aboriginal custodians during the residency. A journey that was generous, gentle, flowing, informative and fearless. It was a process of storytelling about cultural fire. Right fire is about instigating constructive good fire that enhances the flora and protects animals. It is just so powerful to have witnessed it and transformed through the process of learning. And you've probably seen in these images the hand that was moving across the soil was Uncle Noel and Victor Stephenson's hand that, would, that were 
adjusting the soil as they talked to us about what was the right heat and the right time for ignition, what was the right fuel load, what was the right temperature of the wind coming in, what was the right diverse biodiversity that was around that piece of soil on the, on, on, and, and the fuel on that land, what was the right ecosystem and whether that was the time that they should start a fire or not. Prior to my experience at Bundanon, I'd also had experiences around poor hazard control backburns and witnessed how they slowly destroyed and deprived fauna by killing the biodiversity and by clearing land of nutrients through the possible lack of knowledge of understanding that landscape. Something that resonated for me and the audience when Adrian Webster and I were speaking at the opening night of the Fire Ex Right Fire exhibition, which only just opened in April this year in Victoria at uh, Linden Art Space, or Linden New Art, sorry, was over the yarning uh, talks on the weekends. He said, we cannot do this alone. Cultural fire is a spiritual practice. If country is healed, then people on that country will heal as well. That means us. It's so simple and it makes so much sense. And while these images are going on, and I know I've only got a few minutes left, I wanted to share with you that it was really important not to show a fire that was fearful, but a fire that was about the mysticism and the ancestral knowledge. The project took about four years to create. I first um, documented it during that process of um, residency at Bundanon in 2018. This was before the catastrophic fires had started, but they knew, the indigenous people knew something was happening, they could feel it. So they started this, as um, Dale said, in preparation for the major uh, conference that was going to take place outside of Cape York. It, why I went back in 2021, I went back in 2019, but I went back in 21 specifically after the catastrophic fires, because that fire that they culturally burned, when the fires came through, and you might remember they came through Bundanon area and Nowra, they jumped that burn. And all I knew after that time, even though it was really difficult, was to go back and see it and document it and ask permission as a non-Indigenous person whether I can show that to the public because I knew how powerful that was. This was after the fire, the, the, the cool burn, and it shows you, you might be able to see the mosaic pattern. It's the circular pattern. And what that does in between the natural forestation is allows the plants to grow again. It is not completely cleared. That's the exhibition that took place. Um, I've only got a few more minutes, but what I wanted to say was um, I capture on iPhone photography. I love walking and documenting landscape and I've followed that path for 30 years. In the first part of my career, when I started that project of learning about the environment and speaking to people, it was 1988, 89. And with funds, I went back, I went over to, um, I went to parts of Europe and I went to the United Nations Research Library and Center. The material that I got at that point was material that they'd written in 1972 about their predictions of the future of now. And we're still trying to work it out. There's no time left. I hope this means something and resonates for you. I had a lot more to share, but I think I got my message across. Um, and follow, follow the indigenous people and really believe that it is, it, is, um, it is the right journey. It is the right fire. Thank you.